Thank you very much. I'm going to be talking about the importance of diagnosing and treating oligometastatic disease and how it's influencing ADT usage going forward. Those are my disclosures, none of which are relevant for today's presentation. So here's the typical previous situation of a patient undergoing primary curative therapy who then develops a biochemical relapse. In the past, we would wait for that patient to develop metastatic disease. And then over a period of time, that patient would eventually develop castration-resistant disease. Now what's happened is after local therapy, patients who experience a biochemical relapse because of the increasing PSA will undergo staging evaluations with CT and bone scan. They will almost undoubtedly be negative. Patients, because of their uh, anxiety and a variety of other characteristics, will end up receiving early ADT that will eventually lead to the development of non-metastatic castration-resistant disease, which will eventually go on to the requirement for lifelong ADT developing metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer. So the focusing uh, landscape that affects ADC usage completely changed by the utility of novel diagnostic agents such as PSMA, choline 11, or F18 PET CT scanning. And so what used to be biochemical relapse is now being diagnosed as having oligometastatic disease. And then that enables us to treat oligometastases with MDT, a metastasis-directed therapy, with or without systemic therapy, and hopefully affect cures, and hopefully eliminate more advanced cases of metastatic castration-sensitive prostate cancer, and the development of non-metastatic castration disease, as well as metastatic castration-resistant disease. So the traditional staging studies are generally negative, despite small metastases being present, and those would include bone scan or CT scanning. And these patients are unstaged, which really underestimates the extent or volume of cancer, can leave the patient untreated or undertreated until the cancer grows large enough to be imaged. And this can lead also to overtreatment, leading to non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer, and then MCRPC CRPC with lifelong ADT. And the leading-edge imaging scans, which just alluded to, include allowed detection of oligometastatic prostate cancer, earlier and more precise metastasis-directed therapy, delay the prevention or progression to metastatic disease, and this should shorten ADT, delay ADT, or possibly even eliminate ADT uh, after a remission. And so oligometastatic disease is a concept that was actually developed by Dr. Samuel Hellman and Ralph Wechselbaum in the mid-1990s. And as it relates to prostate cancer, it's really a continuum from localized disease to advanced metastatic disease. Many different definitions. Generally, we look at five or fewer remote deposits, and this used to be called previously low-volume uh, disease. In 2016, uh, uh, ASCO, in their part of their educational session, highlighted uh, the novel approaches to oligometastatic disease, and in their educational session, mentioned that recent advances in imaging really are resulting in mounting evidence suggesting durable control is attainable with treatment modalities targeting oligometastases either with or without systemic therapy. And so this is a, was, a, at that point, a relatively novel concept. And here's a typical situation in which a patient presents post-prostatectomy with an elevation in their PSA. The traditional scanning was really sort of uh, equivocal. A, a PSMA PET scan showed an abnormality in the pelvis shown up here. And then with radiation therapy, that metastasis was completely eliminated without the necessity for systemic therapy. So just a, a general qu a, a quick pop quiz here. What percentage of men with biochemical recurrence post-radical prostatectomy who have received maximal local therapy with radiation, salvage radiation, or with a PSA between 0.3 and 4 will have negative conventional scanning, but a positive PSMA scan? And the answer to this question is really quite remarkable. It's actually 75% of those with negative bone and CT scanning post-radical prostatectomy and salvage radiation and with, in the biochemical setting, will actually have a positive PSMA scan. So let's talk about metastasis-directed therapy, and can it be added to local therapy and move toward curability? So obviously, here are the initial treatments intended for cure. Metastasis-directed therapy generally take 
the form of surgical removal of oligometastases, an emerging field, and also the more time-honored radiation-directed therapy to oligometastases. And here is the Oriel Phase two study. Again, this is observation versus stereotactic ablative radiation therapy for oligometastatic disease. And again, this is an alternative to early initiation of ADT and really identified patients to the delay the initiation of ADT. And in this particular study, a uh, very, very substantial progression-free survival and biochemical progression-free survival with stereotactic radiation therapy alone compared to observation. And those patients who did not harbor any mutations actually did much better. Here is the Glixman study basically looking at metastasis-directed therapy for molecularly defined oligorecurrent prostate cancer. And again, this study showed that you could obtain biochemical NED status, although it does not equal cure quite yet, but it represents a necessary step toward it. And then if one takes a look at the combination of the Oriel and STOMP studies, this, uh, this paper reported that with long-term follow-up, again, with only with site-directed therapy, MDT remains associated with improved PFS of noted the PFS beyond four years was 15 to 20 percent with MDT, regardless of mutational status, without any necessity for systemic therapy. Well, what about combining uh, ADT and radiation or site-directed therapy in patients with oligometastatic disease? This was the uh, well-publicized EXTEND Phase two study presented at ASTRO last uh, October. And this study uh, randomized patients to receive hormonal therapy alone versus hormonal therapy for about six months, followed by MDT and metastasis-directed therapy. And you can see in the combined therapy, the progression-free survival with the combined therapy was substantially greater than hormonal therapy alone. Uh, and this led to a longer degree, a longer period of time of eugonadal testosterone level and overall uh, overall survival advantage. So again, a, a very, very interesting paper that combines both ADT and site-directed therapy in the oligorecurrent population. And the Andrews paper from the Journal of Urology last December showed with surgical removal of monometastatic disease, solitary oligorecurrent prostate cancer, predominantly with surgical removal, you could get significant progression-free survival at three years without the administration of androgen deprivation therapy. So the takeaway lessons are now going to the future. Molecularly targeted uh, diagnostics such as PSMA detects sites of metastases that previously went undetected. The identification of oligometastatic disease, whether it be de novo at the time of biochemical or the time of recurrence, enables potentially curative MDT therapy with delayed, shortened, or elimination of systemic therapy and lessened conversion to metastatic castration-resistant disease. And the addition of molecularly targeted therapeutics will continue to improve the outcomes of a once uniformly lethal disease. Thank you very much for your attention.